What's up, guys? Today is the sixth episode of the Plant Movement Podcast. My name is Willie Rodriguez, and we have a special guest in the house today. We have Rolando with New Leaf Nursery and Defender Landscape. What's up, brother? How's everything? How's, going, bro? How's, How's everything? Going? Good, good, good. How's life treating you? Uh, busy. Busy? Busy. Busy. This guy is dabbling into so many things after the episode that we did prior, the fifth episode of Multiple Streams. I felt right to bring him on because this guy is involved in so many different things within the agriculture industry, and I just wanted to bring him on to show you guys what reality could be for anybody out here if you put your mind to it and you push the boundaries every single day. So, Rolando, what's up? Everything good? Good, good. <laughs> Talk to me, man. So, um, tell me your story, man. I want to hear how you got into it. Your background, I, I, I want to hear it. Tell me. Well, I mean, uh, starting from the very beginning, my father was very, like, disciplined. He was very uh, big into uh, business, so I was always around that, and it was always, you know, caught my eye and my interest. Um, I was working a couple jobs here and there when I was younger in the, in the teens. Um, I decided to join the military when I was 21 um, on my 21st birthday. Oh, wow. Uh, Thank you for your service. <laughs> no problem. Thank you for real. Uh, uh, we, um, I did that for about eight years. Um, eight years. Wow. Uh, I just, uh, we, I got a uh, deployment to Afghanistan, 2012, 2013. Wow. I came back. Um, and we, my, my cousin goes, Hey, what are you, what are you doing? He gives me a call cause he knew that I just got back. Mm -hmm. He's like, Oh, what are you doing? I'm like, Oh, you know, for work. I'm like, oh, not really nothing right now. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I got an opportunity for you, but are you willing to, to travel and like relocate? I'm like, Oh, it's not, no big deal. So, um, two weeks later, after getting back, from after Afghanistan. getting back from Afghanistan, uh -huh. I was in Texas training to in to go into the oil field wow so like never ever been into that industry had no idea what i was doing like i was like wow this is crazy yeah, so but you, you just did it yeah you i just went. did it uh -huh. i mean the 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 money was right the okay. opportunity was there i was young single no kids so i was like you know what, how old were you um so i was about 22 23 years old okay. when i got back from afghanistan okay um so i ended up training and they sent me to North Dakota. I mean, I have never been in the Midwest <laughs> yeah, that far north. You're a Miami boy from the Redlands. Yeah, um, I got to I got to North Dakota. It was negative forty below zero. Negative forty. Negative forty. I've below only zero. been in negative nine degrees, yeah. and that that was burning my face. We were we we were thirty miles south of the border of Canada, and wow. it was it was some pretty rough work. Uh, <laughs> I was like, it in was the just, oil mill, or you, you? They sent you there for training. Uh, we worked. Uh, what I did was called on site. So um, there was drilling rigs out there, and what we did is we gra we we got all the production from the drilling, mm -hmm. uh, and we we um, refined it into oil. Wow! And so we shipped everything out. So it was like a it was like a big massive refinery. And it was put in what fifty five gallon drums? No, it was actually put in like. Um, like 2,000 barrel tanks. 2,000 barrel tanks. Yeah, it was massive. Massive tanks. Um, and we would ship on, on like high production days, we'd, we'd, we'd empty like four or five of those tanks. Wow. So it was like a lot of production, lot of production. going on yeah. all the time. Um, it taught me a lot. Uh, one year into it, I told my cousin, he was my boss. I go, hey, listen, you know, I love the, I love you for bringing me on, but, you know, I want to, you know, step up in the, in the, in, in the, the business. In the business. Yeah, and yeah. he's like, Okay, I'm going to send you to all the places that you need to go to, get all your certs and all that stuff. One year later, I was a supervisor wow. of uh, their biggest production wow. over there, which was uh, we were subbed out with Stat Oil, which is one of the biggest European uh, oil uh, guys out there. Wow, that's just to show you guys that, um, that connections mean a lot, all right, who you know, mm -hmm. and also you willing to put the work in to make it possible right which is what you did right and it's you know some people are like oh you know it's your cousin but um he goes back and still to this day he's like you know out of all the people working for me you were the one that least gave me the headaches you know like yeah. i would tell you to do something and you never gave me that that oh you know you're my cousin and you know never yeah. you just no, you separated it completely completely yeah you know outside of work we're your family inside of work you're my boss exactly and that's, you know that's how it is um, I gathered a lot of experience, a lot of managerial experience, and there was a huge operation. So like, it was shocking at times, like they, and they would throw something at you and they're not babying you over yeah, there, yeah, you yeah. know, like 
Yeah. This it's is like a the mul- well, the military prepared you for it. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. Uh, yeah, and uh-huh. it's it, it was like it was back to back, back to back, and um, 2016 happened. Oil, you know, everything crashed. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Oil was 120 dollars a barrel. Crazy. It dropped down to like 30 wow. overnight. Wow. Yeah, I remember that. So everybody was like, well. So we started laying off people. That was one of the hardest times in my life to start laying, you know, helping to, you would have to write a list of the least performers. Wow. That's and, tough. And have to hand it to your boss and I, say. I hate having to, to let go of people. It's like, wow, man, this is, this is it's not, brutal. this is not what I want. And it's not what I signed up for. Yeah. But you know, that's part of the, the part of the, the game. Part mm-hmm. of the game. Um, I knew my time was limited. I was like the seventh one left over there and we would go to work. How many people were there? Uh, we had over 200, 300 wow, employees in so North Dakota. From there, it ended up seven, seven, seven employees. Seven. That's and rough. we would work 14 days on, 14 days off, fly back and forth. Every 14 days on, I was on a plane. Wow. And um, when you would go up there and you would just sit there for 14 days and do nothing because there was no production. Yeah. Like everything was, the, when, when oil, the barrel of oil goes too low, uh, drilling rigs don't drill anymore. Okay. Because it's not... It's not cost effective. Exactly. Wow. So you would not get... You're not getting any production. So you're just sitting there 14 days. And I'm like, man, this. how long can this last? Yeah, so your mind started thinking. And then what? You came back home. So I started coming back home. And my dad was still alive at the time. And um, I was like, dad, you know, uh, it's about to hit the fan. Yeah. And he's like, well, this is a time um, to to start looking forward for your future. What do you want to do? Like, you're at an age that you've accomplished a lot. You've, you've been through a lot. Mm-hmm. So what, what do you want to do now? So, um, I just, it just clicked in my head one day. I'm like, I don't want to work for anybody anymore. Yeah. Um, I got laid off. Um, they gave me the, they gave me the option for rehire and, um, they're like, Oh, you know, it's just a temp- temporary layoff. You can go home and then we'll call you back. And I said, no, I'm not going to go back Yeah. because I'm not going to, I'm not going to have my fate in somebody else's hands. You know, there's some people that work great with that. I just don't like that. Yeah. So um, I came back home 2016 and went immediately into searching for like a startup company. Like um, so somebody selling lawn routes, whatever. To buy been, an existing business. Existing business that, you know. So you I, have some money put away. Correct. You know, I, I grew up in the farms around here in the Redlands and I was cutting grass and always cutting down trees and stuff like that. So it was just part of life okay. down here. It wasn't mm-hmm. like business. And then I saw a lot of my friends that were in the industry and they're like, oh, you know, we can probably do that. So I started landscaping. I bought a route, little okay. trailer, single axle. What'd you buy the route for? I think it was like seventy five hundred dollars with a trailer, a mower, and like a weed eater. That's not bad. Very simple. <laughs> that's and cheap. With, yeah. with like eighty lawns. No, but that's good for you guys because you don't have to start a business from scratch. You can mm-hmm. buy something that someone is selling, or you can jump into something and team up with them as well. Correct. Yeah. So that's good. So I mean, I had. No idea how to run a lawn route, but it just, you know, you just got to do no, it. You, you figure it do. out, man. If you ran an oil mill and you went to <laughs> Afghanistan, running a, a, a lawn route is cake. But that that maintenance is a daily grind. Of course. It's a daily, daily grind. There's money. no days off. Right. It's a hamster wheel. Yeah. Um, when you get to big commercial properties and stuff like that, it becomes profitable. Yes. Um, but um, what I saw in that aspect, it was just a daily hamster wheel grind. No, but um, it's good. It's good to start there because it teaches you a lot, and then it teaches you how to save because you're not making too much. Mm-hmm. And then most people that do jump into maintenance, if they don't make it big in that and get commercial c- accounts, they'll end up jumping into something else. They'll save up whatever they can and they jump into something right. else, which is what you did. And and I've always been around heavy equipment, so I I you know I've operated heavy equipment all my life and all that stuff. So it's I go let's see what, what let's see what else is out there. So um, the clients were always telling me, hey, can you do landscaping for me, like little mulch cleanups? Oh, I got a, a client. Do you do land clearing? And I'm like, I mean, I don't. I'm Never thinking in my head, it. I don't do it, but if the money's right, yeah. I'm going to do it. Which is, which is overcoming the fear of actually going and jumping in and making it happen. Right. So we started working with uh, people and people, the word started getting around of, you know, I bought a skid steer. Uh, Hurricane Irma happened and it was seven days a week working, you know. Five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, to seven Irma, o'clock at night. A lot of people made a lot of money. A lot of money. A lot of money. With Hurricanes are very, profitable. very profitable for for people that cut down trees, not for nurseries. <laughs> no, <laughs> I no. lost it all, and he made it all. Basically, that's what happened to Irma. So Irma, I decided to go to the. Uh, I started, you know, uh, doing my research on skid steers and stuff like that, and then 
Um, I bought my first skid steer. Um, we financed it, uh, but basically Irma helped me Paid pay for it quick, uh, quickly. Yeah. Um, that's because you put your money in the right place. Because right. you could have taken that money and and went and done something else with it, but you put it to pay it off, so you can eliminate that that from the from the checklist. Right. And then so we were like, wow, this is you know, I started dabbling a little bit heavier into the tree trimming and the land clearing because I mean a hurricane happened. Which is to defender landscape guys. The defender landscape. Mm -hmm. And then um, we just started going at it and we got pretty good at it i think and um we started getting clients the word started going around and and we just um land clearing is not something that you get often mm -hmm. it's not a it's like for a new development right? actually now it's it's it's, it's popular it's popular yeah, because they're building again they're uh, building everywhere throttle. it's like yeah. it's like we it's weeds popping up everywhere yeah, houses yeah. so yes there's it's very profitable and um, you got bucket trucks and and trucks with the what is it called they yeah, the bucket trucks the bucket trucks the dump um, trucks dump trucks you ended up acquiring as time went on you uh, saw the need to grow and get more of these tools correct. to be able to work faster and better right what i learned is you don't buy something just to buy it you buy it as, as you need it of course and yeah then, obviously as you grow, you buy, you keep on buying, you keep on buying, and um, you just acquire, and then you look back five years, four years, and you're like, wow, I've acquired a lot. Yeah, <laughs> and what you told me yesterday, because we were speaking yesterday, um, you told me that um, sometimes it's more cost effective to buy a machine, even if it's brand new, and make, like you said yesterday, an $800 payment right. versus having three guys do it. You could do it with one guy. Mm -hmm. Right, that operates the machine, and the machine shows up to work every day. Doesn't call out sick. Correct, and 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 unfortunately now it's kind of it's the the atmosphere is changing in the employee. Um, there's a Big lot time. of um, it's very difficult, as you know, to find employees. Yes, and they don't stick around long because there's um, the the technology is has been a, a like a bittersweet kind of thing. Like everybody sees, um, oh, I don't like this job. All I have to do is go online and find another one. Mm -hmm. You know, and and it's kind of hard for us entrepreneurs and business owners to keep, you know, good and steady hands. And when the the ones you do have, you have to keep around and, you know, unfortunately, take care of them. you know, you got to you got to take care of them. Of and, course. And um, that's part of being a boss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, it's a 24 seven nonstop. Well, you know, yeah, you, yeah. no sleep all, all day long. We go to sleep at midnight, one o'clock, wake up at five, six, ready to rock and roll every day. And that's if you don't have kids. <laughs> yeah. If you have kids, there's you're just, up all night. Yeah. You're, you're a magician. Depending how old they are. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, so Defender ended up getting to to where it was, and then, so then after Defender, you you, um, what's the process behind you opening New Leaf? What was that that next thing for you? Because obviously you saw an avenue there, mm -hmm. and you had a piece of property that you had acquired. Mm -hmm. So you're like. You know, tell us about that. You're like, hey, let's, I want to start something new. I want to dabble into plants. Right. Um, my dad passed away uh, July 4th of uh, last year. Um, so we, my mom was kind of, you know, we have seven acres and we had a couple other farms. And I'm like, you know, let's do something. You know, let's let's do something to help you out with agriculture. It, this was all just to help you out with ag exemption. Yeah, of course. And it turned into. Instead of renting it out. You, you're starting a business on it. I, I have a very s tight circle of, uh, like, powerhouses in, my, in my, my group. You heard that, guys? A tight circle of friends that are all pushing ahead. Yeah, I mean, my, my, my circle, you call them any day, any time, they're, 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 they're go, go, go all the time. And, if you, and it's nice and comfortable and, and great to have friends like that, that you can give them ideas and they'll actually water the seed exactly and they'll act, you know they'll, they'll they'll jump in with you and brainstorm with you that's and that's a, another thing that i've that i've learned throughout the years in this industry is everybody's willing for the most part to help you out yeah it's a brotherhood miami landscaper the one was paul paul he, i mean i've worked with him before yeah. uh we've worked with uh, like a yeah, bunch we, of guys we all here. help each other out all of yeah. us mm -hmm. we all put food on each other's like plates. it's the other day uh a friend of mine was like man you're, you're just giving away your skid steer for the day and like yeah <laughs> i'm not I charging mean, him anything I mean, that's my buddy man i gotta help him out if i ask him for something he'll give you know yeah. he'll give me his like one hand washes the other it's it's this is how you have to do it but like going back to the, the my group my group of circles you have to have somebody that's good at their thing like yeah. um everybody's good at what they do 
Of course. Uh, I, I'm not necessarily good at the whole accounting, the numbers, the whole nine yards, because that's just not my forte. You get me out in the field and I make stuff happen. Exactly. Uh, so I have the, I found, and he's happened to be my friend for a long time. He's just a powerhouse in that. Um, I have a guy that's like super duper OCD. This is, is one of your buddies. One buddy. of my, the, the three guys, the uh -huh. OCD guy, the guy that researches and develops everything. So I have the, the accounting guy, I have the research guy, and I'm the field guy. Yeah, and that's how you create a powerhouse. Like you said, a team. That's how you create a team, guys, when you jump in, because you, you ended up jumping in with a couple of partners to do this. To start doing this, yes. And um, we we started from like a little thing. We had no idea what we were getting into, and now we're on our second, you know, Mist House, uh, 120, 130 by 36. Huge benches, and it's, you know, it's, it's going. And when you, I remember talking to you, you were telling me that when you were thinking about doing this and you were just, you know, brainstorming, mm -hmm. that um, I remember you called me like a month later and you're like, man, I ended up getting, you know, just by telling people that you're doing this or you're going to do this, you ended up getting a huge order for next year, 2022, right. of interior liners to grow them, right. which is what you're going to start doing in these bow houses. We're, we're, doing, we're doing smaller plants, smaller interior plants, liners, 6-inch, 10-inch, 8-inch, you know, whatever the client uh, wants from us, we're going to grow for them. Eventually, you know, we want to grow into something a lot bigger than yeah, what we are right now, uh -huh. but it's we're basically phase one right now. No, you're phase one, but the fact is, guys, listen, if you're brainstorming and brainstorming on, you know, soaking up knowledge on a specific thing, if he would have never you know, pulled the trigger and said, hey, and started telling people, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm opening this, that the that order, that huge order, or multiple orders would have never came. Right. Right? So you had to act. And I had the laundry list of people. You're always going to get those. Unfortunately, you're going to have the negative people. Of course. You yeah. know, saying things that they have no idea what they're talking about. But that it, comes back to, like, their mind and how they think and where they think their capacity is. And... They can't, they don't see themselves doing it, so they want to fill you with fear and doubt and make sure that you don't do it, right? So, you know, it's like, especially now with all the prices skyrocketing. Super. And, and they're like, eh, you're crazy to start this and look at all the prices of the metal and everything. I'm like, so tell me when's a good time. Yeah, when do I start? When do I start? Tell me on a on a calendar when. Yeah, but also when when like looking at that, he's he's referring to his miss houses and all the stuff he's had to do to set up the property. Because that's what you're. How much in on on that property? Oh. Minus the property, just just We're, what you, what you've done so far, which is just two miss houses, light water. What where you without at? without buying plants, we're about one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars right now. So he's at one hundred and twenty five. But if he doesn't invest the money, what is that money gonna make? It's mm -hmm. not gonna make anything. And then the final product too has gone up in price. So you'll be able to somewhat, the numbers are the same at the end of the day. Everything's right. gone up. Even mm -hmm. the price of the product has gone up at, you know, at, the, at the finished price. So it, it's going to fluctuate. And, and now's the time to you know, invest and get your money out of cash because they're printing it, guys. Right. They're printing the money. So it's getting to the point where you know, money's kind of worthless. It has no value. Yeah, what, what, what material would have cost to build one of those houses two years ago would have been ten fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. Now they're about thirty five. Yeah. 30 yeah it's crazy depending on depending on the level of like shade you want to go to yeah. the the poly you're going to put on it like the benches the benches alone were about twelve thousand dollars that's great for benches for benches this is benches guys twelve thousand dollars yeah but if you don't have guts and you don't see the end result like you have a game plan and you see it happening and you already got orders coming in so it's like man i have to get this done as fast as possible so we can come through for these people so we can keep on growing and that's that's what we got into and we've talked about this before uh the following through people do not follow through yeah that's a big I, one I, if you guys follow through and whatever comes out of your mouth when it comes to taking care of your customers and just everything in general showing up on time all that type of stuff like for me i give specs of plants and i gotta make sure that that's what they are so i rather under spec something than over spec it and look look wrong look bad Your reputation means everything. What comes out of your mouth, you have to come through. And if you do that, you will stand out way more than everybody and else. It's, and it's, what he said is very important because that is the only thing yeah. that you need to start a company. Really? Is, is your word. Your yeah. word. Yeah, yeah. You keep your word. If you want to start selling you know, dry erase boards and you and you a company says, I want 50 dry erase boards by tomorrow and you say, I got you. You better, you better have them. Do then. it. 
And that person is going to tell the next person. They're going to exactly. tell the next person. Gonna, exactly. And guess what? You're going to have the biggest dry erase board company, company in, in the state of Florida. Exactly. No, and that's that's, it. that's what it comes down to, man. That's that's it. Yeah, that's know? how that's how my business has gotten to where it is today, and that's how you have gotten to where you are today, coming through. I know you're a big advocate. This guy will throw somebody out of his nursery if they show up late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's happened. <laughs> yeah, because you don't like to play the games, and you have that military background. You have that background, you know, the oil refinery. Where there's no games, so when no, people come no and games. play games, it's like, hey, I don't want to deal with you. And I'm the same type of way. I don't like I don't like games. I don't like playing with people that, yeah. that, that are on that. And it's very stressful. Uh, you guys are gonna have your days. The people that want to grow their business, you're gonna have your days. You're gonna be like, oh my goodness, this is crazy. What am I doing? Those days come often. Yeah. And I don't care if you've been in the uh, business for you know one day or ten years. It's it's those days come to everybody. Yeah. And you're like, well, you know, you just gotta keep on pushing forward. And if you have that drive, you're gonna make it happen. And you sure. see New Leaf being way bigger in revenue than Defender could ever be. Um, actually, uh, next year I've kind of like, I've kind of. Uh, st- you know, step back a little bit from Defender because I've been putting a little bit of effort, a little bit more effort into New Leaf. Okay. But starting January, it's going to be, you know, rocking and rolling. Full, full throttle for both of them. Full throttle for both of them. Full throttle for both of them. People well, are going to see what's happening in 2022 and they're like, girls, you've gone crazy. Yeah, that's you know? good. I, yeah. I like crazy. Crazy yeah. is very well. It's going to go full throttle for both. We have, we have a lot of uh, things in store for 2022 and it's going to be wild. Oh, well, that's cool, man, because it keeps you energized, mm-hmm. you know? Like, um, I asked uh, Paul on the last interview, you know, what keeps you motivated? And it's things like this for, for entrepreneurs, guys. It's it's when you're stuck in the same thing and you're doing the same thing, it's just repetitive. It, it, gets, it gets boring in a way. It does. You know, that I've been there. And by, you know, integrating new things and trying new things, which are multiple streams, and trying to do all these things and making it happen, that whole process is it gives you that energy that fire to to grow because you see it you know in your mind you see it play out in your mind now you just got to hit the steps to create that reality for yourself right and for everyone that's around you like like this idea of yours has now brought two of your buddies in Mm -hmm. that now that everybody's going to be able to make something from it absolutely and all the people that you buy all the stuff the guys that are doing the bow houses like you know the idea is putting food on so many people's plates Mm-hmm. And it's just amazing that if you would have never done that, you know, you wouldn't be where you are today, you mm-hmm. know? So the multiple streams, guys, is a, is is something powerful. It keeps you energized. And this guy's dabbling into so many things, which others might think you're crazy. But for me, I think it's I think it's normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because that's, that's the same mindset I'm, I'm on. We I'm, don't I don't know why, but I like to be at 100 miles an hour. Me too. I don't mm-hmm. like to be at 50, 30. I like to be at 100. Sixth gear floored. <laughs> and everybody's like, you got to go to sleep. You got to, you know, you know, you're stressing out. No, so I, like, me I like it. Look, man, at the end of the day, how old are you, 33, 32? 33. You're 33. You go hard, right? And listen to this, guys. You go hard, right? Till you're 40, 45. At 50, you are set. You are set. That's right? the goal. That's the goal. And you get people to help you out along the way where when you're 50, it's not like you cash out. You still have everything operational mm-hmm. and you're still doing other things, but you're you're able to relax a little bit more. But you got to put in the work. You got to grind now so later on you're more you know laid back and you have that opportunity to relax. I know it's super cliche, but I spend a lot of time as well uh, looking at motivational videos online and stuff like that. When you feel a little bit down, especially me, I, I go on IG or YouTube or something and I start putting motivational stuff on. That's and powerful. you have to have a vision to what you're going to do and just do it. If you don't like what you're doing, change it. Yeah, It's that simple. Yeah. If you oh, don't like is. what you're doing, if you don't like your job, change it. Yeah. There's it, it, it's all in your control. Google, you know, assistance, grants, stuff like that, it's out there. There's many avenues of of ways to make it happen. Whatever you like, whatever makes you happy and you want to do that, do it. It's possible. Or you if you want to jump into agriculture, you want to jump into a specific thing within agriculture, maybe the job that you're at, you know, you're not happy, at, like he said, and you can get a job right now. We are short of everybody out here. Yes. So you have opportunities probably even make more than what you're making wherever you're at and you can jump into this industry into that one thing that intrigues you mm-hmm. and you can start working in that field for somebody soaking up knowledge. Right. And then you go saving up money and now you go little by little and you start 
your own thing if that's what you want to do or you perfect your craft there and you help that business grow because you don't have to open a business. You can help a business grow and by doing that, you know, you'll you'll get rewarded for it. I start, I learned something very very valuable from my leaders in the military. They told they always told you to always train for your next rank. So wow. and the the rank above you should be training you to take over that position. Never be scared of somebody taking over your position because your 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 mentality should be I'm moving up. I'm That's moving powerful. up in rank. Yeah, and, so, and they're moving up in rank so they're happy to teach you cuz they're ready to jump correct. up. Correct. So mm -hmm. you always got to if you're hungry, I if you want to call me on the phone whatever time of day and you want to ask me a question that I think we all we've all been there. I've called you to for some we, questions. All of us, yep. Everybody's called each other and I'm super if I know or if I know someone that can help you I will be more than happy to share the information. Anyone that has called me, they know that I'm the first guy. I have people that call me for product, for plants. And they're like, Willie, do you have it? And I tell them, if I have it, I'll tell them yes. If I don't have it, it all depends how many they need. If they need 10 plants or 20 plants, I don't have time to go and do that. If they need 500, yeah, I'll go do it. So I'll tell them exactly where it's at. Mm -hmm. And people are like, man, you're crazy. Why would you tell your customer, you know, why would you send them to, let's say, the competition? It's like, man, it's okay. It's, we're all helping each other out, man. It what I learned matter. about this industry is there's we supply so many people, um, especially in the interior game. Yeah. We supply the whole world. No, the interior game has blown up to a whole nother level since 2019. And I think I think COVID was um and like I said, finding the positive into in, in all the negative. Uh COVID was a very, very positive thing. Unfortunately, you know, it was a, a pandemic, but it was a positive thing for if for you knew what you were, yeah. you know, if you for were, our in, for our industry because some people went completely out. E-commerce. Well, e-commerce. That's that's the new age. That's where this stuff is going. At least for that, there's a lot of people that are shipping plants in boxes, uh, interior stuff, and that's what you want to dabble into that's as well. Exactly what I want to go to. You know, and and this new generation is Amazon, Etsy. You know, all these Etsy, e mm -hmm. Etsy all these e-commerce places that they uh, that they want everything on the tip of the finger delivered to them. And you know, that's what we want. You gotta to figure. You got no. There's people doing it, so that's good because you can see what they do and make it your own. Mm -hmm. And it is something massive, guys. A new way to sell. Unfortunately, I can't sell, you know, 45-gallon plants <laughs> and put them in a box, right? The shipping will eat me alive or eat the customer alive. So I don't think I'll sell too many of those. But no. but it is nice. You know, it's, it's, it's innovative. And that's what this industry needs. Like all this stuff, even like the podcast, all the people, the landscapers that do the podcast up north, these are all, you know, innovative new things that have been, you know, brought into light in the past, let's say, four or five years that are now becoming something like a staple, something hard, something to really get out and, and, and push, you know, because mm -hmm. there's so much money to be had in that industry. I'm talking boatloads of money. Boatloads. Boatloads of money. So all you got to do is figure out how to do it and advertise it right and make the box look pretty <laughs> <laughs> and make sure the plants are nice and, and just get the customers to place the orders. And nothing's impossible. Just do it. But all of that that I just said is is what make, keeps you hungry. It keeps you thinking. It's like, okay, we're going to make a box. All right, how are we going to make the box? What design are we going to put yeah, on? Yeah, it's how not we just buying it? a box and saying, yeah. I'm going to stick a tree in it and yeah, let yeah, it ride. It's different. You know? So like all that keeps you hungry. It keeps you motivated to perfect it and make it as good as you can make it. Mm -hmm. And there's so many steps that go into it. So imagine like, guys, the multiple streams is something massive. And that's what really, like I said in the other, the previous episode, it's something that gets you to where you want to go in a massive way and what Roly's doing is integrating that yes he does have multiple businesses um, within it but it's agriculture at the end of the day mm -hmm. and he has two main streams that have multiple streams within each one that is allowing him to pick up money from all these different avenues to keep on pushing to where he's trying to get to right so that's awesome man the end game the end game mm -hmm. so uh for people to call you in regards to defender to get their trees trimmed right mm-hmm and for New Leaf, where do they, where do they uh, contact you? The 76-479-4143 and ask for Roly. Ask for um, And we'll, if, uh, we'll have uh, a proposal ready for you the same day or the day after. And we are pretty, we're pretty good at, you know, getting everything figured out. Where do you work from? From where to where? Um, I like to keep it from Fort Lauderdale all the way. I've gone all the way to Key West, but I'd rather keep it to like Marathon. Okay. So from the Florida Keys, Midway, <laughs> up to Fort Lauderdale is where he likes to work from. And you guys can check him out on Instagram. What are your IG pages? Uh, New Leaf Plant Nursery. And then we have Defender Landscape. 
Uh, and I he's mean, also dabbling into field ground palms as well. Exactly. Right there at New Leaf in the back area. Mm -hmm. So check him out, guys. You have anything else you want to say? Oh, that's it. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. For real, man. Likewise. This was a good episode, Likewise. and I'm very happy, happy and grateful to have you on. Thank you, it means man. a lot Thank and you. to be sitting here next to a soldier <laughs> that sold oil and has done everything that you've done and the, th the things that your family has had to go through. Mm -hmm. And you've taken the positive out of all the negatives that you've been dealt with in your life. And you are a soldier, my brother. Yeah. So I love you. Thank you, brother. And love I'm very too, grateful to have you here. So you already know, guys. Check them out if you need anything. All right. And stay tuned for the next episode because you already know it's going to be fire. God bless you guys. You'll see me on the next one. Bye.